this left hand when we apply this block, you'll watch right here, is it strikes down, strikes down with the block. When we strike down with the block, we get some nice return energy from the ground working back up to help create more power through takeoff. What's going on everybody? It's Tyler Ray here with Project Pure Athlete and welcome to the very first episode of Jump Therapy where we take your jumps, the fans, and break them down PPA style to add inches fast to your vertical. That's right. If you want your jump looked at by yours truly, please submit your jumps to projectpureathlete at gmail.com. Make sure you caption jump therapy and attach a high quality side angle look at your vertical jump. Doesn't matter what you're doing, one foot, two foot, doesn't matter what sport. If you're looking to add inches to your jump and become a more efficient athlete, I got your back. That's what it's all about. My name, as I mentioned, is Coach Tyler Ray, and I'm a 17-year veteran of the coaching world. I work as a professional jump coach, and really have spent the better part of my career traveling the world, working with athletes of all levels, all the way from amateur to professional, and helping them maximize their vertical jump. So that's what today is all about. If you haven't and you're not familiar with what we do here at PPA, make sure you jump into the channel and smash the likes and look at the videos and do all the things. We got lots of stuff, something for everybody. Without further ado, let's jump into the first jump. Uh, three, two, one, uh, let's go. So our first jump is brought to us by one of our own, one of our team PPA remote training athletes. And I'm going to butcher this name. I know I am. And I'm so sorry, dude, but it's Panagiotis Calamitis. It's probably not that. Can I just call you Pan? Me and you are cool, right? I'm going to call you Pan, Pan the man, Pan man. Listen, man, we're going to get after your jump. Let's get it figured out and dive deep into jump therapy. All right, let's take a look. Yeah, boy, we have a 180 off one foot, and I love getting these one foot submissions. I think a lot of the time, people don't realize that that's, this one foot space is really largely responsible for a lot of the nomenclature that we get, which is the vocabulary we use to describe what's happening in the jump, the track and field world. Did it for many, many years. I really just spent a great deal of time trying to transition this nomenclature into the two foot space and create the standards. So we're really looking at the same types of things from one foot to two foot. We're looking at number one, carrying efficient speed through takeoff. So creating what we call controlled approach velocity so that as we transition into this block or this takeoff foot here, this left foot, you're able to stabilize it. At the end of the day, whatever you bring in, you damn well better be strong enough to transition it and be in a good position to be able to utilize it. If we're not, all we're doing is bringing in speed to get to our faults faster, and really we're gonna amplify the faults. We're gonna make it stand out more and cause more of an issue. So we're doing a good job here. We're carrying the ball in that right hand, kind of an open hand carry. This again is a dunk attempt, so this would be obviously a, a travel in a game, but you could still dribble in and pick the ball up at this point and do the same motions with that left arm. And that's what I like about the, the kind of the free hand carry is it really opens up this left hand. Let's scroll this way. This left hand, when we apply this block, you'll watch right here is it strikes down, strikes down with the block. When we strike down with the block, we get some nice return energy from the ground working back up to help create more power through takeoff. Combined with that subsequent strength and power, we obviously benefit a great deal from that. So I like that a lot. We can see, this is one thing I'm not a huge fan of, is where these eyes are looking. Now, I know the eyes are going down instinctively to help lower this center of mass, right? Because into this stride, he's doing a good job of being nice and low. We want to maintain this hip height as we push through this stride into our block. And we're doing a pretty good job of staying there, right? We can still see that, that that right knee is bent, we're lowered. That's going to ensure that when this right, or sorry, this left side hits position and we receive ourselves into what we call a stacked position, which is doing a pretty good job here. I can, I can see a little bit of hinge through this hip. 
so we are a little bit late getting to that position and a lot of that has to do with what's happening here at the eyes right the body will follow our eye line so I want those eyes forward and slightly above the horizon opens the chest up it'll get you nice and tall it's gonna really set you into a good position for this takeoff here you do recover here I can see the eyes transition but I want you there initially that's gonna benefit you a great deal I'm not sure why that's moving that but either way okay so I want you there I like that a lot and then lastly we definitely have a bit of an underutilized free leg or drive leg so you can watch this right leg here as we transition through right we get that little bit of a actually we float a bit we're not getting a toe drag which is all right which means that we're starting to drive up through that left foot but I want to see that leg working more aggressively through this portion here as we strike that left hand your primary focus is going to be drive that knee up and through as hard as possible and that will help elevate the center of mass quicker off the earth and give you a higher jump overall so we need to up the overall intent of this block and takeoff because as you're getting a lot stronger which is clearly evident you are man we're getting a lot stronger we're also putting ourselves into a position to be able to accept more energy and a higher degree of intent so that's really what we're going to start with let's work through that eyes up open the chest we're pushing i like that stride here as we're pushing through that stride but let's get that right free leg working a little bit harder Personally, I find it a lot of fun to be able to look into the ebbs and flows of different jumps to find out if there's something in there that speaks to me. And that's what I urge you all to do when you watch these videos is look for commonalities in what's happening with these athletes and find out if it can help you. We have a excellent 12 week jump technique program that if at any point you want to jump into, the link will always be in the description below. And it really takes you through a progression of how to become a more efficient jumper uh, step by step over that 12 week period of time. All right, we're going to get into jump number two. This is what I'm excited for. Let's hop into it. You ready? Three, two, one, a skidoosh. All right, our next submission is from Ladislav. And Ladislav is from the Czech Republic. I love getting submissions from all over the world. This still blows my mind, I'm not gonna lie, but let's dive into Ladislav's jump. He's a shorter jumper, and I know you shorter jumpers out there are gonna be looking for some insight, so let's not waste any more time. All right, my man. I really like a lot about this jump and specifically what's happening here through uh, the last couple strides, handful of contacts. But let's start first with where we can definitely see some room for improvement. Let's watch the start of this approach and I want all of you to pay attention to what's happening with the arms. All right, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below right now. I'm gonna give you a second. What do you think's going on with the arms that needs to change? The answer is, you don't want to hear it, pause it, but the answer is nothing. Nothing is happening with the arms here. We definitely do not have any activity going on with the arms. They're kind of dangling by the side. And this passive non-movement, we'll call it, does not allow the body to really tap into its natural ebbs and flows. Specifically, when we move from the shoulder, it allows us to kind of move over top of our hips into our lats and really give our spine and hips the ability to do their job. So when they dangle like this, we're really lacking a lot of the um, effort and efficiency that comes from utilizing the arm. So what I want from my man Ladislav here is to think about the initial part of this approach similar to that of the initial part of accelerating into a run, right? The arms are gonna move very naturally so that when we hit this, right, the lowering here into the start of our penultimate stride, right, we lower the hips, hips go down. You can see that as evident by the right knee bending and a well-preserved center of mass. I actually wouldn't mind seeing this body just a hair forward as he pushes through this stride, 
which I absolutely love this mid-flight position. Let's get a mid-flight. There we go, both feet off the ground. We see a very nice structured upright torso, an aggressive push through the stride, both arms being sent back into extension, prepping for that big aggressive strike, and a nice balanced head and neck position, which I love to see. And that allows him to hit this really beautiful position right here, nice and quick in this plant sequence, right? Right shoulder, or sorry, left shoulder, left hip, left ankle. We call that being stacked. We have the arms striking down with the block so that we get that really nice, we talked about in the initial video, that return impulse from the ground. So from a technique standpoint, a lot of things going very well at the end, which is good that you were able to recover those positions. But when we leave this kind of potential kinetic energy, right? This additional energy that we can transition over here. When we leave that on the table, well, we leave it on the table. We wanna see how high you can jump with your current strength, power, stability, abilities, a lot of abilities. I'd also love to see you get that left arm drive left arm up with the right so we can get those lats firing uh, through both sides and then you can drop that left arm in order to get that right hand reach there. Um, but a lot of great things happening and really doesn't need to go into much more detail here. There's a lot of good natural behaviors happening through the lower body, which is that we're seeing kind of a smooth acceleration off this stride where I do see the need to connect the dots realistically is what's happening at the start of that approach. The rest will come together as we get more jumps in. And secondarily, and this is something to consider for every athlete out there, is that we need to prioritize our overall performance from a training standpoint. So it's going to be strength, power, conditioning, body composition, all of these elements come into play. The stronger you get, the more you can manage and kind of relative to your body mass, the higher you're gonna jump. So I'm gonna recommend that everybody watching this that is looking to add training into the equation, right, beyond just naturally jumping, is we have a great remote training platform that for the time being until the end of April is gonna be still at the $29 a month. It is going up to 49 in May. So if you wanna jump in and hold those prices, I'd recommend clicking following the link in our profile below and becoming a part of our Team PPA remote training platform. But dude, great positions. I can tell you've been watching a lot of our content, right? We know that this upright position here through the mid, mid flight of that stride is so important to being able to optimize what we call your ground contact times, really just how long you're spending on the ground. We want you to spend only as much time as necessary to create and release energy and nothing excessive so that you don't bleed energy out of the joints that are involved. So wonderful job and appreciate you submitting your video for Jump Therapy. Well, that's all she wrote for the first episode of Jump Therapy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a comment below. Let us know what your favorite part was. Let us know what you'd like to see um, on an upcoming episode of Jump Therapy. Maybe there's a sport or a specific type of jump you'd like to see broken down, and we can keep our eyes peeled for that. If you're enjoying yourself, make sure to subscribe here so you can be notified of all the upcoming videos. And don't forget to jump into the channel and check out what we already have. As always, it's my pleasure. I can't wait to jump into the next episode. Until then, stay bouncy, my friends. Stay bouncy.